80 tons. This, after 40 years, we have another 40 tons. We can say that's rich. Our language is rich. But actually, um, say, then it, the political movement is short period. After that, then another political movement said, oh, previous political movement is wrong. That means everything is useless. Even we have so much vocabulary written these days, all this we <laughs> actually uh, not using. Also, I think we, we are not going to use it anymore, except for research. That's during the Cultural Revolution. And uh, then after the Cultural Revolution, we <laughs> That's uh, after Cultural Revolution, the, then again everything turned back. First, the people in prison and sent to labor reform in society, then return back. And he said, uh, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. You can vote them, yeah? That's why that some of them went back to position, but not anymore uh, like a powerful position, not like a governor and that kind of stuff. When they come back, actually, the party, general party secretaries are more powerful. And of course, those are not uh, party members. When you come back, you go Tenshin. Uh, Tenshin uh, political, political consultant group. Mm -hmm. Or go to uh, United Front Office. All this you can, you can uh, give advice, but you have no idea of power. That's why. Uh, <coughs> They don't have any power to divide them as a, uh, administration language. And uh, the scholars, scholars went to school and the research institutes. And this part really that it's uh, worked. Then uh, the continued to resume Tibetan language and uh, Resumed uh, Tibetan culture, and uh, yeah, here I think Jalo and myself and all of them, uh, I think really he generation between young generation and these uh, people from prison, and we learn from them, and then we become teacher and teach the other generation. <coughs> that one work. And uh, then, uh, again, uh, allowed to publish Tibetan classical literature books. And uh, like a first, like a Kesa Erbeck. Kesa Erbeck is first thing. We, uh, this is still hard to describe the feeling we first had here Kese epic from the broadcast. <laughs> it's really that kind of feeling is something. Uh, include Kese and other um, Tibetan literature books. And still continuously publishing. And uh, now, before I said Chinese administration, government documents, <coughs> the huge percentage. And these days, the Tibetan classical publication is the most, uh, the biggest percentage. Uh, and every, everywhere. And the official publications, personal publications, everywhere. Uh, and also that, uh, during that time, another change, uh, change happened with the, the young generation uh, the, uh, the old school, 
who knows also the you know, Chinese. That way they have a chance to learn Chinese literature, also Western literature. <coughs> then on the Tibetan uh, new generation intellectuals think mm. also uh, Tibetan classical literature is not suitable, not so attractive, not so suitable to express themselves. That's why they start to learn modern, so-called modern literature from Chinese. Then we had from 87, 83, actually end of the 70s, start uh, Tibetan literature, new movement. That's this is really strong. And uh, the modern novel, short story, and uh, free verse poem, all of them start in the 80s. And still these days getting uh, stronger. And uh, more and more people, uh, the <coughs> writers come out. And uh, uh, b before I need to count some poems, how many poems we have, poems, and we have a database in Utah, and that's, I think, 1998, I did uh, 1,000 poems, more than 1,000 poems. Uh, that means, I think, uh, on our publication or writer's story, this, this time, now is is a peak, no more than that, that before. It's a really big <coughs> number. And uh, you can see over there what totally what show is more than selection. <coughs> uh, <coughs> also we uh, called the uh, research magazines. Yeah, and uh, also this time uh, something uh, happened is that uh, something like uh, different before. Before something translated into Tibetan, then everybody read it. Because most of them, most Tibetan don't, they don't know Chinese. That way you have to get the idea from that translation work. Also, this translation is by the Chinese government. But after Cultural Revolution, still continue translating it, but few people read it. Because who need to read who knows Chinese? Even the translator himself, when he translated it, there doesn't need people to read, he just wants to translate. That's all, because most people uh, read Chinese. It not necessarily uh, ready. So that cause problem is that it's more hard to unify new terminology. Then he knows Chinese, he knows Chinese, he can translate, he can translate, she can translate. Then everybody uh, disagree each other. Okay, I give her a name, you give her a name. And uh, these days, the even start to translate the Western, we have a big collection of Western literature translation, and the Western philosophy, we have over there, and about 20 books now. Uh, but if somebody knows Chinese, then easy to understand reading Chinese. If you read better, hard to understand, because the terminology is not unified. And everybody make a uh, calculator. Uh, that's this day's uh, problem. One thing is not unified. One thing is reduced <coughs> the necessary of the translation. So most people read Chinese, speak Chinese. So all the people, they don't care. I don't think you Western or whatever. No, also Chinese communists don't force you to learn something. I mean, they don't care. Uh, communist uh, serious. Uh, then we had uh, these days we have 
than new uh, literature <coughs> magazines. We about in our record, level record, official and unofficial, total more than 100 headlines. That's a lot. And uh, also individual publications, not official publications. A lot of publications these days. But these days is when, uh, because young generation eager to, uh, there's a, a media and the chance and everything express themselves and a lot of books come out. But these days, the, the literary critics say, these days, writer, the more than readers. That's fine. <laughs> the few people read, and more people write. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, now uh, uh, the Tibetan language on the stage these days, stays in teach, teach, research, and writing. Writing is uh, mainly not, not related with administration and that kind of stuff, just uh, essays and uh, literary work. That's all. That's why uh, we can say pretty alive, this language alive, but powerless. That's uh, this day's uh, situation, and uh, all Tibetan leaders on the position, they know Chinese, and the Chinese is really good. And uh, yeah, and uh, the high leaders are Chinese, that's why power is reduced, but more alive. That's uh, this day. And now we take a look at uh, a little bit uh, Tibetan in exile. Uh, I think here, Tibetan, everybody here heard a statement uh, made by His Holiness just recently in uh, Tibetan children's village. Said, uh, now that it is of common knowledge that Tibetan language in Tibet much better than in exam. Yeah, that's just recently, last month, he made this statement. This is actually was true, clear, since 1979. It's clear. And, uh, <coughs> but uh, some way people didn't see it or not didn't want to see it. When start new arrival, new escapers went to India, then everybody feel a little shocked. Why so so few writers in exile? They have a, such good uh, school system, and all of them educated, and uh, that's a uh, fact. Now I think uh, his audience for a time said that. And that's uh, no, we can clear. <coughs> and now we don't. Uh, we look back. Uh, it's hard to say, but the people think <coughs> way we can make this. One thing I said in India, Tibetan uh, schools. Uh, in exile Tibetan schools, they have a one Tibetan uh, curriculum is one Tibetan class. And they call, I don't know, still I don't remember, called Tibetan language class or what class? And they were mathematic and Barbara and then, then Tibetan class. In this class, they put everything in there. Both religion and the history and uh, whatever they want to put, whole thing put in there. And uh, uh, debate, Tibetan philosophy, and uh, religion history, and history, and everything. 
and uh, I went to a school, the government, the Tibetan education department sent me a school uh, to take a look how they teach Tibetan language. I went to that school, and I sit in school, and one monk teacher <coughs> come in, and uh, no books, and come with a tanka. Tanka hung in the blackboard. blackboard. Tanka is a speaker, a speaker, a speaker, a speaker. Will of life. Will of life. Will of life. That Tanka. And uh, then teacher get uh, held a stage, show each elements. What's this? What's this? The students, it's uh, really loud outside. Oh, that's that. That's that. OK, then you can definition. They can memorize all this and memorize. Then how, how class, as if in how class, is that? And they never used a write a sentence on that blackboard. And then after that, it's finished. It's class finished. And the teacher get up, take back the tanka and bring back. And the drink tea break. Then I tell to the uh, old teacher to drink tea. And then I said, uh, the, uh, you, sh you sh should not, I asked him and his uh, teacher, you don't want to do something uh, language, uh, teaching, and let them how to write, what they say, and that kind of stuff. And uh, then this teacher said to me, he quoted by really uh, ancient scholars, Gontan, Bambi Gurmi. He said, Zawa Zongne Yenla Mato Chis. They can say, Seize the root of the tongue, you know, uh, uh, give up uh, leaves or branches. Zawa Zongne Yenla Mato Chis. Yeah, give up root and uh, how does it branch, something like that. Means religion is good. <coughs> the other things are great. They have a, uh, that kind of attitude. Uh, and then I come back to my hotel. I met some few students and uh, asked them to read uh, the English to me. Right? And then I asked them, them to, really simple, and uh, they asked them to, I don't understand English. Please, could you write Latin to Tibetan? This, they can speak, they cannot write. And that's 88. Then, yeah, uh, that means this school is focused on religion, Buddhist, the fear of uh, uh, lose religion too much. And secondly, also the way of teaching is all the way in Lhasa. Aristocrat, the Lhasa schools, all kinds of teaching, right? Like, uh, first, you write in the drawing, the, uh, like, uh, calligraphy class is so important in that system. And the more than you write a correct sentence, write a nice car, and much important than writing a really great sentence, nice sentence. That also involved, that way, uh, no, really few people write uh, in Excel. All publications produced by mostly uh, Tibetans from Tibet, not from Excels. Uh, Uh, that's one thing, and um, that's it in Excel, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, then we have a few minutes. Okay, now in Tibetan, uh, there are new movements. One is publication movement, because computer <coughs> is spread over. And that way, most people have uh, uh, make an own book. You can write something, and uh, something really funny. You feel 
<laughs> nothing to read, but still you want to publish. And uh, they can write, then they can uh, design a little book, publish. So we have a lot here. That way, everybody have chance and take knowledge and make a own book. That's one uh, reason, uh, computer. Secondly, is a uh, website, create a website. These days, there are uh, officially, there are about 10 websites, more than 10. And uh, an official uh, website, like a uh, big website, like a uh, Tibetan literature uh, website and uh, language website, and uh, the blogs a lot. This day is so active. And uh, also we can say the, they enjoy a certain level of freedom of speech in that uh, all this uh, level of the uh, website. That way, more people evolve writing and exchange uh, ideas and uh, give more information to each other, share information, fresh information to each other, also yelling at us, <laughs> each other. Something really rude. <laughs> That's also uh, common. That uh, means more young generation get encouraged to read the best. Ah, that's one thing. And the last month I had a trip in Beijing. I saw one thing, another music. One company, telephone company, mobile company, and they give people new, uh, give, give people for free new mobile phone with Twitter. <laughs> uh, they give uh, for a certain uh, group of people and to get it. Uh, report of the testing. No, it's a testing level. And uh, this uh, new mobile phone can send short message in Tibet. Uh, no, lots of people are using it. If this is successful, going to be if successful, then company will uh, spread all over this cell phone. I think more uh, increase the number for Tibetan use Tibetan language in different way. Uh, yeah, finish. <laughs> 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 yeah.